Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. We are getting ready to talk about twins and triplets and quads and multiple babies because hey, that's what you need to have is multiple babies, especially if your farm is going to survive and thrive. So let's learn more about multiple births today at Lanessa Farms. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, so today we were supposed to be talking about, <laughs> it's always what we're supposed to be talking about. Uh, we were supposed to be talking about line breeding and kind of continuing on with our genetics talk, uh, but we have been getting lots and lots of questions about single births, multiple births, uh, and things related to that. Um, and we've also been getting some questions about money, about income. And you know, multiple births is one of those things that we often overlook uh, when it comes to sheep and goat farming. Um, you want to have multiple births. And the reason you want to have multiple births is you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. You're getting a lot more output for your input. If you have moms that are consistently only having one baby, you need to analyze what it is that you're doing. And it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. Um, most people think it's all about genetics. Um, and it's not. Some people think it has to do with the male. Um, and it doesn't. And some people think it has to do with nutrition, and it kind of does. But in all reality, it has to do with a multitude of things. Um, so the first thing I want uh, to talk about, uh, point number one, is going to be genetics. And this is where people get a little bit confused. So when we talk about genetics and multiple births, we have to consider the dad, and we have to consider the mom. Now really, the twins are going to be coming from mom. Um, and this is another reason why when you buy from a producer or you're buying, you wanna be buying from a reputable producer or someone that has birthing records. Because as we look back in their lineage, we want to know, are there twins? And this goes for both sides. Um, are there twins? Are there triplets? And this is very, very important because this is probably the number one thing um, that is going to go into if you're going to have multiple births. Now, nutrition has a lot to do with it. Timing has a lot to do with it. But just like we talked about in our video about size, shape, and structure, uh, which you can see right here, um, you have to have the genetic potential. You have to have that underlying genetic potential. Even if you do your timing right, and even if you do your nutrition right, if you don't have your genetics down, it doesn't matter. So when mom and dad breed, mom is gonna be the one that decides from a genetic standpoint if the babies are going to be um, singles, twins, triplets, okay? Dad gives sperm, mom gives an egg. So on this side we have sperm, on this side we have eggs, and dad, eggs, egg maybe, um, dad's always gonna give enough sperm to impregnate darn near as many eggs as mom drops. Um, what is important is mom. This genetic trail of going to mom has a lot of an effect on how many eggs she's going to release when she goes into heat. However many eggs she releases, uh, the male, if he's healthy, is gonna have enough sperm to match that, and you could be getting baby or babies. And then that, again, is primarily gonna depend on mom. So why do we care about dad and dad's genetics? Well, here's what I want you to consider, and this is where you have an important uh, thing to remember, and that is what happens when mom and dad have girls. What happens when they have yous? Now their genetics for having twins is going to come from mom and dad. So this is why it's important to know if dad has twins in his background as well, as well as mom having twins in hers. If you have a father and a mother that both have twins in their background, 
you have a much higher probability of them producing U's or does um, that are going to produce twins. So again, I just want to narrow this down for you. When these two are having babies, mom is what matters. Mom's genetics is what matters when it comes to them having single or multiple births. Dad's going to release just enough sperm to match whatever she drops. However, when these two start having baby girls, these baby girls, their genetic is going to be dependent on if dad comes from twins and if mom comes from twins. Just like this mom depended on it, what genetics she got from dad and mom. Okay, did dad and mom come from lines of twins? The more lineage you can get for twinning, the more uh, higher increased chances of you having twins of your own. Now, with that being said, first time moms. Here at Lanessa Farms, we don't put too much credence on if a first time mom has a single or has twins. We have plenty of first time moms that do have twins. Um, but when it comes to first year, uh, second year, do we have twins? Do we have twins? Meh. In this case, you know, if they have singles, we're not too concerned about it, especially if they come from a lineage of having twins. We'll let them slide. By the second year, if you have a single and a single both times, um, they're gone. They got to go. Um, and the reason for that is, is because I can put just as much money and just as much feed into a you or a doe and get two or three babies um, as I can put into one. Now, I'm going to have to feed those babies a little bit more, but I still come out way, way ahead. So this is one of those things that you really, really need to consider because it is crucial when it comes to the difference between farms that thrive and farms that just barely survive or fail. Um, genetics, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you need to consider with genetics. I guess when, uh, I will say this, with uh, multiple births, I want you to consider uh, breed and I want you to consider um, size and I want you to consider milking ability. So breed, um, some breeds are far more prone to having twins than others. Um, hair sheep, especially when you're getting into the St. Croix, when you're getting into fin sheep, uh, those are, uh, are big ones. Uh, fin, big ones. They are well known for having multiples and breeding out of season. Size, um, how big was the dad? Are you going to have problems? You know, is the is dad's lineage um, to where you're going to have monster, monster babies and you're going to be pulling them? Or are you going to have issues there? And then milking ability. You know, can mom... Um, can mom support? Can mom support multiple verse? You know, in some cases, uh, in our personal opinion, uh, boars, uh, they can be uh, a little light on the milk side. Um, South Downs, South Down sheep, they can be a little light on the milk side as well. Not to say that these rules stand true all the way through, but these are not well known for being heavy milk producers. So again, if you're gonna set yourself up for multiple births, which we want you to, you also have to take some other things into consideration. This is where breeding, uh, crossbreeding, hybrid vigor, things like that really come into play and can really benefit you as a small time farmer. If you are going to have a animal with genetic propensity for size, like a boar goat, um, but you're also concerned about milk production um, and kidding production, you can always breed in something like a Nubian or maybe a dairy breed like an Alpine um, or a Sain or, uh, or a Sanin, excuse me, or something like that, um, that may help. So we talked about 
Point number one, and I'll just write these up here so we can keep track of this. Point number one is genetics. Hey everyone, you know why I'm here, right? Because you still haven't liked and subscribed. Why, oh why don't you just like and subscribe? You're breaking my heart. You know, we put out all these videos for you. You're learning so much about sheep and goats. You're bragging to all your friends about how much you know about sheep and goats. And, and you're not giving us any love. So, you know, jump on the bandwagon. Subscribe, like the video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, even if you just got to be like, hello, that's perfectly fine. We enjoy it. We like hearing from you. Anyways, let's get back to the video. You either have it or you don't. Um, and so this, again, you need to follow in your lineage. Point number two is nutrition. So when it comes to nutrition, you may hear this termed as flushing. Flushing is adding a, a extra feed to our user or dose prior to uh, prior to breeding. So um, it's done prior to breeding. And that's going to be about two weeks, and it's going to be. Um, additional nutrition. So why does this work? Why does flushing work? Well, as ewes are getting ready to go into estrus and does are getting ready to go into estrus, their body condition um, helps to tell their body um, what's going on and what to forecast for the next spring. If you have an animal that has very good nutrition um, and is very healthy, um, they are going to drop more eggs. This is scientifically proven, by the way. Uh, they're going to drop more eggs because their body's saying, hey, things are good, we're thriving, we're surviving, we're doing great, and we can support multiple, we can support multiple births depending on uh, your body condition. So this is kind of nature's way um, of determining condition. This is nature's way of saying, hey, can this you or doe support more than one baby? If the answer is no, um, well, here's the other thing that I want you to consider about flushing. It's like Goldilocks. It's got to be just right. So ideally, we want slightly undernourished going into right on the money, so I'm going to use the term perfect. Perfect nutrition, um, body, um, body score or a body build, um, body composition going into two weeks prior to estrus. And estrus is, I just mean the heat, their heat. Um, this is, this is Goldilocks. This is what we want. If they're overweight, bad. Um, they are, this is probably, this is actually probably the worst case scenario. Um, overweight ewes, overweight does will actually drop less eggs than any other body score unless they're just completely emaciated. Um, this would be our number two would be slightly underweight. Slightly under or um, no addition just on pasture. Um, so even if you're on pasture, it's important for you to give them a little bit extra. We use grain uh, to do this and we just feed them. We just kind of introduce this to them a couple weeks out. Um, and this really helps out a lot with, um, with dropping more eggs during the estrus cycle and uh, leads to more babies. Last but not least is timing. Now, we can get into medications and artificial ways of sinking ewes and does and causing them to go into estrus, but we're not going to get into that today. That's a 
completely uh, different. Um, that's a whole nother video. If we want to get into progesterone suppositories and um, HCG injections and things like that. So we're just pretending we're doing this old school style. And the next one is gonna be timing. Specifically timing of your bucks and rams. So when it comes to timing, introduction of your bucks and rams are very, very important. Um, ideally, You want to keep them away, um, keep bucks and rams completely away from the ewes or does. And when I say away, I don't mean across the fence, I mean miles, plural. Um, and the reason for this is the scent that bucks and rams release uh, can cycle um, can cause the use to cycle. So uh, we want to keep them away for at least 30 days. Um, if you can keep them away longer, it's even better. And this also it helps to explain why if you are a small time farmer and you just have uh, females, this works very, very well. Um, if you keep your females away from your males, they can't smell them, they can't see them, for at least 30 to 60 days, when you reintroduce them, um, the ewes will go into heat usually within about 14 days. So ewes and does will go into an asterisk in about 14 days. Um, they can go into what's called a silent heat, but again, we're getting into the deep weeds of this here. Just remember this, generally speaking, this, by the way, um, this actually has a name. We call it the Ram Effect. Not to offend our, our um, goat people. It's just called the Ram Effect. Maybe, the, maybe it's called the Buck Effect, too. I don't know. But just to make everybody happy, we'll include them both. Um, but this is a trick that they found out by keeping them away. Now, another question that we get asked sometimes is, um, what if I want to put a goat in with my sheep to get them to go into asterisk? Can I use a mixed breed? Um, the answer to that, the research on that is kind of shifty. Um, they don't really have a good answer for you at this time. A lot of the universities have talked about that. Some people swear by it, some people don't. Um, the other thing to consider with timing, and the thing that I, I find to be a little annoying um, and you can really get yourself into trouble with this is uh, we've got 14 days to spend 14 days um, from the time you put your bucks or your rams in there and what's gonna happen is is your buck or your ram is gonna run himself ragged um, you're gonna have to deal with nutritional issues you're gonna have to deal with injuries etc just everyday problems um, until those ewes or does actually go into an estrus to where they can get bred so what's the answer to this well the answer to this there's a couple different answers um, and the one that really works the best and you may not like this but the one that really works the best is to use what's called a teaser a teaser ram or a teaser buck and this is either, um, if you've got big bucks to spend, you can buy a vasectomize. Vasectomized uh, ram. Um, if this really isn't reality for most people though, the reality is, is you're gonna have to put in a, a we call them a waste, um, a waste ram or buck in there for 14 days just let him run himself ragged um, he's gonna not they don't eat they don't drink they do but not very much um, because they're chasing girls around uh, for most of the time um, and then after 14 days then we introduce the real ram 
or buck. What I like to do um, in, with my waist uh, rams or bucks is I like to put a marking harness on them. Um, and what a marking harness does is it sits on their brisket and it's got a colored crayon on it. And as soon as I see that they're starting to mark ewes or does, I get them out of there. Um, sometimes I won't even wait that long. Sometimes after those 14 days, you just throw in your good buck or your good ram and let them go. Um, but by using these three skills together, you're going to significantly increase um, your chances, significantly increase your chances for having multiple births. Um, if you're experiencing a lot of single births, um, you're doing one of these things wrong. Either you're not paying attention to the genetics of the animals that you're getting, you're not flushing, or you're not watching the timing, or you're doing all three. And we see this a lot with small farms because they feed them the same thing every day. They're very habitual about how they take care of their animals, and we understand. Um, we're not saying anybody doesn't take good care of their animals. We're just saying they're very habitual about how they take care of their animals. Um, they don't pay attention to their genetics. They feed the same amount every day, no matter what. And they let their rams and bucks roam free um, with, their, with their ewes and does. Keep them away. It's just life is easier. Keep them away. Keep them in their own area. Keep them in their own area. Keep them away from the females, except for breeding time. It, it, this just works out so much better and you're gonna get so much better results. So I know I just threw a ton of information at you, but I really, really feel that this is good information. Um, sleep on it, digest it, think about it. Think to yourself, if every animal that I have on my farm had twins or triplets, um, how much more money would I be making? And I think you'll really, really be surprised. Um, we've got some really cool videos that are coming up. We are, I promise, going to get into line breeding and inbreeding. Um, hopefully, knock on whiteboard, knock on wood. Um, that'll be our next video. We'll be on line breeding and inbreeding. And we're also going to devote some time, uh, hopefully really soon, to talk about um, limited liability corporations and why they are important. If you don't follow us on Facebook, please do. Check out the TAC box. Um, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up and let us know if you've got questions, comments, or concerns. As always, I am Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.